joining us now to discuss even further is Texas Blockchain Council President Lee Blaratcher. Welcome, Lee. Hey, George. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Thanks for joining us. So, Lee, what's your take on the New York Times piece? Rockdale, Texas was somewhat of a focal point of the, of the article. Surely the Texas Blockchain Council has something to say about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm coming to you from the Texas Capitol actually today where we are talking to legislators. Uh, and then, of course, Austin will be the center of attention here in a few weeks for y'all's consensus conference. And we're looking forward to having a big presence there. And, and Rockdale is about an hour north of where we are here in Texas. We've visited it many times. We've taken um, Texas elected officials on tours there. We've taken Senator Cruz on tours there. And um, you know, the, the, the city council just voted unanimously, the city council of Rockdale just voted unanimously uh, to condemn an anti-Bitcoin mining bill here in Texas, Senate Bill 1751. Uh, and so it's pretty clear that the citizens of Milam County and the city of Rockdale are very supportive of the Bitcoin mine there. Uh, they're getting jobs there. It's creating enormous um, uh, revenue for the state and for the county. Uh, Riot is the largest taxpayer for Rockdale ISD. Uh, and, and if you can tell from the image of uh, the New York Times article, it, I think they put a filter on that because it doesn't look anything like that. It's a beautiful part of the state of Texas. Uh, there's really no air pollution there. Uh, so uh, w w the, the New York Times article, it, it has no credibility. New York Times has very little credibility in Texas in general anyways. Uh, that article also lacked quite a bit of credibility. Sure. So not commenting on any of that about the picture, but it does look overexposed. But the, you know, the Texas Blockchain Council is an industry association, right? You're working to make Texas the state of choice for Bitcoin and blockchain innovation. But you've recently announced a new initiative. Can you talk, you talked about SB uh, 1751 a little bit. Could you just talk about your initiative a little bit? Yeah, we've lost. The, we've we've launched the "Don't Mess with Texas Innovation" campaign alongside the Digital Chamber of Commerce and uh, Satoshi Action Fund to ensure that this legislation, Senate Bill seventeen fifty one, does not pass. Uh, it is a misguided effort by uh, a Senate Republican uh, named Senator Lois Kolkhorst, who has. Uh, been a great uh, representative of Texas for many years in the legislature. She's pretty misguided on this one, though. Um, the, the key to the bill is that it would remove Bitcoin miners from the ability to offer ancillary services or grid balancing services on the Texas grid uh, within ERCOT. So um, it's going to increase prices that ERCOT pays to procure those services because you're removing uh, very low cost bidders who are driving the price down for ERCOT to procure those services. Uh, so w we oppose the bill. A lot of other groups and associations and um, counties and chambers of commerce oppose the bill. I think it's just a lack of education. Uh, I think Senator Colcourse is, is eventually going to be a natural ally uh, of Bitcoin and of freedom uh, and of Bitcoin mining. Uh, she just doesn't know it yet. Right. Lee, I want to and just bring in a little bit of skepticism just for the sake of argument here. We've talked previously about capital misallocation when it comes to public Bitcoin miners and the cheap debt that they took on. In a similar vein, how do you combat the counterpoint that Bitcoin miners shouldn't be the recipient of these types of tax incentives to reach either you know profitability or viability? <laughs> Yeah, so the first thing I'd say is Bitcoin miners don't receive any subsidies from the state of Texas. They participate in the, with the same rules as every other industry. Uh, and most Bitcoin miners don't get paid to turn off. You only get paid to turn off if you've ha if you purchased a hedge, if you have a, a forward block of power. And uh, so the majority of Bitcoin miners here in Texas are not in that position and therefore they're just turning off economically where the the wholesale price of power goes above their break even point say around 125 dollars a megawatt hour and they choose to turn off uh, because it's more profitable for them to do so uh, which is just the free market working at its best so uh, we really don't feel that uh, the bitcoin miners are receiving any undue uh, tax advantages or uh, subsidies from the state there are zero subsidies from the state of uh, texas they're just operating within the the market that's been created to create efficiencies and efficient use of, of electricity in the state Right. Understood, Lee. Just wanted to bring that question up. I got another one for you. So the skeptics will also no doubt point to your co-sponsors on this initiative, right? They're two digitally focused, the Satoshi Act Fund and the Digital Com Commerce. These are 
things that want Bitcoin and want blockchain to continue forward. How would this bill have potential implications beyond just affecting Bitcoin and the things related to Bitcoin? Yeah, so the, the way that we've been thinking about this is there's there's strong opposition to central bank digital currencies and uh, to just increase control by the federal government in general across the country. And bills that oppose alternatives uh, such as Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining, such as uh, eliminating physical cash and things of that nature are really paving the way for a central bank digital currency. And so we oppose a central bank digital currency at the Texas Blockchain Council. And uh, we're really trying to connect that messaging where uh, you really should be supporting things that are an antithetical to CBDCs and Bitcoin is antithetical to CBDCs. So um, once um, people from both sides of the aisle understand the dynamics at play here, this is all very new, right? And the legislature in Texas only meets for six months every two years. So we have a very little amount of time to educate them on these things. But once those things are understood, uh, we feel that the momentum uh, for decentralization and for privacy and for freedom will be unstoppable here in the great state of Texas. Understood. Thank you for your time, Lee. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. That was Lee Bratcher from the Texas Blockchain Council.